Welcome to this video. In this video, we'll have a look at which approach you should actually take. Use vanilla CSS, so just CSS, write all the styles on your own. Use a component framework like Bootstrap, and what does this actually mean, component framework? Or should you use a utility framework like Tailwind CSS? We'll have a look at all of that at the simple example of a button. Sounds boring, it isn't. So we want to style that button. And obviously styling a button is not the biggest challenge you face as a web developer, but it's a good example for the question I'll try to help you answer in this video. Should you do it on your own? Should you use a framework for that, a component framework or a utility framework? Now let's do it on our own. Here's the HTML code for this button. And right now I only have a little bit of styling set up for the container to basically present this button in the middle of the screen. Here's our button and since it's the only button on the page, I can select it with the button selector, but let's still use a class. Let's maybe name this class button though. So if we want to start this on our own, we simply add a class to that button with that, well, button class we just set up. And now how do we want to style it? Well, maybe we want to inherit the general font of our page and therefore also set a general font for this page with a font family of sans serif at least to not use this ugly serif default I have on my system otherwise. Maybe we want to override the border to be one pixel solid and then in uh, this purple 521751. Maybe we want to set a background color of that same purple and therefore set the text color to white. And with that, if we reload, it's already looking not too shabby. Maybe we then also want to add some padding to the button to, well, let's say three pixels top and bottom and six pixels left and right. So this is how we use the padding shorthand like this. Uh, let's maybe add 10 pixels left and right. Looks better. And we probably also want to add a cursor pointer and also add a hover and an active style. So button active, button hover like this. And in there, I want to set the background color to basically the same purple, though I will pick a slightly brighter one, maybe this one here, just with the color picker, which is integrated into my IDE. So that now I got a little bit of a hover effect if I go over that. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. And last but not least, I want to override the focus style to set outline to none there. With that, I got a nice button which I can click and which I style totally on my own. And if you want to learn more about CSS in general, how to write styles and way more than these basics, definitely check out my complete guide on CSS, which I got. Link can be found in the video description. However, you probably didn't look into this video just to see how you can style a button. After all, these uh, lines of code are maybe interesting, but also something you do a lot. Now, imagine that you of course have a bigger web page with way more than just a button on it, and you need to style all elements that are on that page. If you write these styles on your own, if you're not using any CSS framework, then obviously everything has to be styled and positioned and layouted by you. Now let's compare this approach here to using a component framework like Bootstrap. So let's visit getbootstrap.com. I also got a series on Bootstrap on this channel in case you want to dive deeper. And on Bootstrap, let's check out the documentation. And there, let's go to components and let's visit the button section there. And as we see here, we add the button class and then we decide with button primary, secondary and so on, which style the button should have and we get the hover style and all that out of the box automatically. So what we need to do for that to work is just click on getting started, grab that CDN link, which gives us the bootstrap CSS package from a CDN. Let's simply import it here. Can remove that import here, by the way, that's from well, an old snippet. We're not using an external style file. And in here, in or with the help of this import here, we can simply start using these bootstrap classes like button, button, primary. Or maybe let's not override this one, but simply add a second one 
so that we can see the difference. And now we only add two classes and if I go back and reload, well, unsurprisingly, we got that bootstrap button next to ours. The cool thing is, we of course didn't write any styling for that and we got the full behavior we want out of the box. That already shows us a big advantage of component frameworks like Bootstrap. We just start adding CSS classes to our HTML code. We don't need to write a single line of CSS code if we don't want to. We can simply start working with the different components and layout options this framework gives us. This already also shows us the disadvantage, of course, we're bound or we're limited to use what Bootstrap in this case, you can use any other framework, of course, what it gives us. If we want this to look differently, we can of course overwrite it with our own CSS code. But if we start overwriting a lot, we quickly end up in a situation where probably using that framework isn't the right choice in the first place, because then we got the worst of both worlds. We're pulling in this extra library, which of course needs to be downloaded by the user, and we're still writing our own code, which also needs to be downloaded, and we're not even saving time then. Still, if we don't plan on overwriting a lot, using Bootstrap or some other component library definitely is a great thing. We save time. There is a third way though. There are utility libraries like Tailwind CSS. We can visit the Tailwind page and there we learn that Tailwind is a utility CSS framework. Now what does this mean? It means that unlike Bootstrap, Tailwind doesn't give us automatically pre-styled components like buttons, cards, and so on. It instead gives us utility classes, which add a shadow, which color something in a certain way, which color the text in a certain way. And we can build our own components with the help of these utility classes. This means that we have to write less CSS code, not zero. We probably still need to do some things which the framework doesn't offer. But we can simply add a bunch of utility classes combined with our own styles to get our final result. So here if I add a third button and we then import Tailwind CSS, which we do by clicking on installation here on their page. Here we also got a link to a CDN. So let's quickly add this next to our bootstrap link. And with that added, we can go down to our button here and now we can start adding some of the classes Tailwind CSS offers us. And you can of course find all these classes in their documentation. There are things like background purple, for example, and hover colon bg dash purple dark to turn this to a darker button when we hover over it. Then things like text white to give it a white text color maybe a font which should be bold, and then also some padding on the y-axis, so top and bottom with py2, and uh, to the left and right with px4, and then rounded corners. Now these are all just classes the framework offers us. You can look them up in their documentation to learn which classes are available and how they work, but they generally always follow that pattern of giving you the utility to assign a color, a background color, some padding, margin, stuff like that. If we save that and we reload the page, we get this button here, which also behaves and looks like a button, which is not a pre-styled component, but composed as we need it, but with the help of Tailwind CSS. So that's like the middle way, the in-between way between write everything on your own and use a component framework where you get everything working out of the box. But which one should you use then? First of all, here's a quick summary. Vanilla CSS means we write all the styles on our own and therefore we can style everything as we want it. Of course, we therefore have to know how to write CSS. Component frameworks like Foundation as an alternative to Bootstrap basically, or Bootstrap give you everything pre-styled and you mainly use the classes they give you, the CSS classes. And utility frameworks like Tailwind CSS are in between and they help you build your layout and your styles with utility CSS classes. Which one should you use then? Well, vanilla CSS obviously gives you full control. That's awesome. You got full control over the styles you're writing. You don't necessarily have unnecessary code. Of course, if you write bad CSS code, then you might end up with spaghetti code or a lot of unnecessary CSS rules. But in general, you can control um, which code you need and which one you use. 
The downside, especially, and I'll come back to that, with uh, component frameworks like Bootstrap is that you import a lot, which you might never use. Back to vanilla CSS, though, there we can also name classes as exactly as we want. So for Tailwind CSS, you set a padding with uh, to top and bottom with PY2 and so on. That might be unintuitive, so it's something you have to get used to. With custom CSS, you decide how things should be named. The downside, of course, however, is that you have to build everything from scratch. That's a lot of work, obviously that you have the danger of writing bad code because maybe you're not a CSS pro and maybe you're not really knowing how CSS works and you just copy solutions from Stack Overflow, which is fine to a certain extent, but which can also lead to bad code if you don't know what you're doing. So these are downsides of vanilla CSS. For component frameworks like Bootstraps, you can develop very, very fast, of course. Everything works as soon as you add a CSS class to an element. And that, of course, means you get a prototype or a complete product page up and running extremely fast. You typically also have code behind the scenes that follows best practices and therefore is performant and not uh, too long, too big. And you don't need to be a CSS expert. You can just start using beautiful styles without even knowing CSS in the end. That is why Bootstrap was super popular like three, four years ago and why it still is popular these days. Downside, of course, no or little control. Now with Bootstrap, as you also learn in my Bootstrap series on this channel, you can override the defaults it sets, you can customize its theme, but that's more advanced and still might not always be the best way for you to really get the result you want. You might also have unnecessary overhead code if you import the entire Bootstrap library and you just style buttons and images and you never touch uh, things like you never use the cards, you never throw these alerts it offers you. Well, then you import all these styles still without using them. So that might be a downside. And one thing you can sometimes see all websites look the same. You can customize bootstrap themes, but they tend to have a shared look. So a look which you just recognize if you worked with it a bit. That might be totally okay for you. It can also be something you don't want though. Now what about utility frameworks like Tailwind CSS? Tailwind CSS and Co, they also allow you to develop fast in a fast way because you just start adding more classes than with Bootstrap, but still you start adding classes. You don't need to write that much code. They also typically, just as Bootstrap, should follow best practices, so you typically can rely on that. And here too, you don't need to be an expert. You probably need to write some custom CSS code because it doesn't offer everything you want in exactly the way you want it, but it's certainly less code than if you build everything from scratch. The downside, of course, still is little control more control than with Bootstrap and so on, but still you're using a CSS framework, so you don't have full control. That's just the nature of it. Also, you might still have unnecessary overhead code if you import the entire library and you don't use the margin top and bottom helper class. Well, then you still have it imported. So that's the downside here too. And with all that, the question of course is what's the verdict? What should you do? And it depends on your CSS knowledge the time you have for your project and which kind of project it is. Is it for your company where you have your own brand and your own style guide anyways and it's rather hard to squeeze bootstrap into that? Well, probably you got no other chance than uh, styling everything from scratch. Do you enjoy working with CSS? Are you an expert or do you want to become better at it? Well, besides taking my course, then writing styles on your own also is a great practice in the end. If that is not the case, however, if you want to finish a product as quick as possible, if you want to finish your web page as quick as possible, and or if you don't know CSS that well, using Bootstrap might be awesome. You get great looking results quickly. If you're kind of in between, or if you know CSS but are no expert and still you want to style some things on your own, a utility framework like Tailwind might be the best choice. Actually, in a lot of situations, that might be really helpful and it's definitely worth playing around with it. So that's my overview. That is my opinion on these things. That is my answer to some of the questions I got regarding what should you do and I hope it's helpful. Hopefully see you in other videos too. Bye.